Brightspace Checklists, Building the Checklist, a Brightspace tip from the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Instructional Technology. Once you have created your checklist, you need to create items to go on it. And the first step to doing that is to create a category for all of the individual items to fall under. You must have at least one category. This could simply be to do. It could also be simply um, the week of if you are going to do it by date. At the elementary level, you may also decide that your categories are going to be subject based. So you might have math, reading, science and social studies. For secondary, you may use classwork, homework, tests and quizzes. It's really a personal preference and what works best for the structure of your course. To create that first category, I'm going to hit that new category button. And it's going to bring me into where I can give that category a name. So in my case, I'm going to use math. Now, like I can in any of my text-based fields in Brightspace, I could use my Windows period shortcut to bring up an emoji keyboard and insert an emoji. But in this case, I'm actually going to add a Bitmoji to my description area. So I'm going to come up to uh, my Bitmoji extension and I'm going to grab my math Bitmoji and I'm going to copy and then paste that down here into my description. Now, something to always keep in mind when you're building in Brightspace is that our children are working on Chromebooks and their viewing screen is much smaller than what we have on our laptops and desktops. So I'm going to shrink my picture there so it doesn't take up as much space for them. But I like that visual to really break up how things are going to be on my, uh, my checklist. Once I have created that first description, I can go ahead and hit save and new and continue to build more. Once I'm done building my categories, I'm brought back to my main checklist editing page. You can see that I have built four separate categories where I'm going to put assignments or activities that I want my students to complete underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna select new item. And I'm now going to actually put in what I want the students to complete. Now, by default, uh, math is my first category that I created. So it is my first category here. So I need to really make sure that I am putting my items in the correct category as I build them. So I am actually going to build a math activity. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to come down to my name field and I'm going to fill this out. Now, just like um, everywhere else, my students know that if I put in a star in front of the title, of an assignment that means it's going to be graded. So I'm putting in my star using my Windows period button and I'm going to do graded assignment and I'm going to say addition with regrouping. Now this particular assignment was created using Google assignments and one reason I really like using checklists is that I can put then those Google assignments someplace for them where they're going to be able to see that they have to be completed. Um, by default Google assignments do not show anywhere other than in content and in grades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my insert quick link option. So that's my third button over. It looks like a little chain mail and I'm going to come in under my content. I'm going to go to my week and I'm going to find where I built that particular assignment. So here it is, again, has that star in front of it and I'm simply going to select it and Brightspace will put a link directly to that Google assignment here in my checklist. Now I need them to know this has a due date so I'm going to select that and I need to come in here Keep in mind that, again, I have to make sure I remember what my due date is that I set up when I created that Google assignment. So in this case, I did the 23rd of July, and it's actually going to be due at 3 o'clock. So I'm going to set my time for that. I always check off that I am going to display this in the calendar as well. So now my students will be able to see this uh, item not only on their checklist, but also on the Brightspace calendar for my course. So you kind of get a two for one when you're adding them here. I can now hit save. And that's gonna bring me back to my initial screen. And you can see here that I now have an assignment or a to-do item listed under my math category. From here, I can continue to build my checklist, adding items to the different categories as I need to. So once I have completed adding my items to my checklist, I can go ahead and hit save and close. And you can see I've gone in here and I've added a couple more to my math and my reading categories. I'm going to hit save and close. And that is going to bring me to um, my whole list of checklists. And I want to see what this looks like for my students. So if I hit my little down arrow, it's going to give me the option to preview this in a new window. 
So it's going to bring it up and I can see what my students will see. So as you can um, tell from here, uh, one reason I like using those Bitmojis, it gives them a visual to break up the different chunks in that um, checklist. And here are, again, what is graded. My due date is going to be directly underneath. And then if I've placed a link to an activity, I can click on that hyperlink that is provided for my students. And it's going to take them directly to that assignment, to that link, to that um, embed, whatever it may be, so they can very easily access it and complete it. And then once they're done, they're going to be able to check it off and move on to the next item.